So this is something that I wish I had heard about much, much earlier. Uh, because I was I was looking up research on like the left right dichotomy, different different um, analyses of like what makes left wing, what makes the right wing, and everything on that. And while I was doing that, I found this the constrained versus unconstrained views of man. And this is something that Thomas Sowell goes into a lot. And when I heard he wrote, he actually wrote several books on this: um, the Quest for Cosmic Justice, which is kind of a critique of the unconstrained view. Um, the Vision of the Anointed, which goes more in-depth, a critique of the unconstrained view. And then A Conflict of Visions. I've read the first one, and I've just read the, this newest one, A Conflict of Visions. It's kind of like an unofficial trilogy there, where that that one he takes a much more non-biased approach, where it's clear, it's clear from his other books that he falls into the constrained camp. But in this book, he really just lays out, like, okay, this is what each side believes. I'm not going to take any jabs at either one. I'm just going to say this is what they believe from their own words as sourced. And he, he uses um, people like Hayek and Adam Smith as the constrained view, and then people more like um, Godwin and Rawls as the unconstrained view. And this is something that as you can see here, if you haven't been reading the chart yet, this is something that provides more of an explanation of why people believe what they do and or actually not necessarily why people believe but how they believe like how they think about things and that might fix a lot of the talking past each other that we've seen um, especially when it comes to like the more SJWs versus not the SJWs I'm not even going to call them the right wing I'm just going to say not the SJWs the, the classical liberals and the conservatives and that and it seems to be that the classical liberal type holds the constrained, tragic vision of man as seen on the right column, and the unconstrained view is the more SJW mindset. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I want to go through here and just show you like what exactly people think. And I know we're already two minutes in, so let's not waste any more time. So the constrained view, the tragic view, think of it more as the humanity is as they are. They're imperfect, they're flawed, and what we have to do is we have to build a society around that. Like, we have to structure society around the way humanity is and manage it in that sense. So, as it says right there, it sees man's nature as flawed, selfish, selfish, and fixed. The idea that, like, we are who we are, we, we, if you give us an option to do less work for better gain, we are more likely to do that. It, it thinks in terms of incentives. Like, how can we incentivize humanity to go a specific route? How can we incentivize a human being to not be corrupt, to not get abused by, or not get corrupted by power? How can we, con not necessarily control them, but how can we incentivize them to make the right decision that makes this world a better place? And that's how that's how I, I'll be honest. That's how I view the world. I think that's how a lot of people view the world, especially the conservatives, but not necessarily just the conservatives. Getting the classical liberals in that sense, as you see, classical liberalism is more about like just a free society and achieving like a a li um a society of like not necessarily democracy, but um a, a kind of system that allows people to to do what they want, but limits them in a certain way it promotes capitalism generally but um wants to put a constraint on the the flaws of capitalism in that sense whereas the unconstrained view is human nature is malleable human nature can be changed and modified and rather than modify society around humanity they want society to modify humanity itself humanity is something that can be molded and fixed and turned around so when you think of like he actually does um go into his book on how Marxism doesn't necessarily fit either view. Marxism is one of these things that it's it's unconstrained in some senses and constrained in other senses. But um, it, it does, in a sense, apply to the future view of Marxism, uh, the, or what Marxists view as the, the perfect society, where everyone is a lot nicer, everyone's a lot kinder, like everyone is willing to help one another achieve like the basic stuff. Um, it's all about more cooperation. And they take the unconstrained view and they believe that capitalism as a system makes um, makes human beings more selfish. And that under a communist system, people would be less selfish because the system does not like mo does not turn people into selfish people. It's, it's more about not necessarily the incentives, but more that um, it, it's allowing humanity to go in a different direction as our personality, like as our personality as a whole. Though I should clarify, actually, now that I think about this, how Thomas Sowell is not trying to put this, even though he quite literally did in this sense, he's not just trying to put people into two different boxes. It's not like you're either constrained or you're unconstrained. And I know I'm going to be referring, I'm going to be using that language throughout this as you're either constrained or you're unconstrained. But he does point out it, it's a spectrum. It's like the left wing or the right wing where we think of are you left or are you right? Like, are you this or that? And 
it is worth remembering again that this is a spectrum. Like um, this is you can be constrained in some senses and unconstrained in another sense, and certain things here and there. And it's not two perfect boxes. But what it is is a spectrum of most people are either leaning towards one end or leaning towards another end. Not too many people are perfect centrists in that they're they're both or neither. Um, in this sense, most people lean in one direction that that modifies their worldview. So that's the basics. If you think of just humanity, the constraint says humanity is as is, and we need to mold society around that using incentives and all that to make humanity do what we want. And the unconstrained view says we need to, instead of like, um, instead of creating a society around humanity, we need to mold humanity itself. So on to the next thing. Um, the unconstrained view believes that society should be led by the strongest and most capable among us and under the right institutions. The constrained view believes that all people should be restrained in what they should be able to do, believes political leaders to be to be of the same flawed, selfish, and fixed nature as everyone else, thus the importance of separation of powers, constitutions, etc. So again, notice how the right one is more about a system of, um, of basically like we need a system where we want the best kind of person to to really rise up to the top but again everyone's corruptible everyone's flawed so we it's more of a like again that's kind of what um you could say like a liberal democracy or capitalism something like that where the system itself correct understands that human beings aren't perfect that um even though some of us are kinder than others more charitable than others more like empathetic than others it is overall you want a system where you don't just give certain people free reign like, we understand that if you were to give even the best people of study free reign, they can be corrupted. They can be, um, they, they might get things wrong. They're not perfect. Whereas the unconstrained view is, in a sense, we just need the right people in charge. Like, oh, the, the, why is why are things bad now? Well, the wrong people are in charge. We need good people in charge, not bad people, which is tends to be why you see, like, um, they're not so afraid of government power. They're fine giving government more power if it's run by the right people. And what we need to do essentially is get those right people in power and make sure those right people stay in power. So in that sense, um, obviously, I, I might let my own bias shine through here. I am easily part of the constrained view. But when you see people, like when it comes to regulations and that we should regulate this or that or we should do this and that, and it's all down to it's it's fine if government does it as long as the right people are in charge. I don't take that. I think that view is flawed, but that is essentially what they believe. Again, if you if you fit this more unconstrained view and you think I'm getting this wrong, please let me know in the comments section. And if you're watching this, scroll down to the comments quick and see if, see if that's any um, any of the complaints. So the next thing, which I think really shows the like, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an expert on um, the judicial system or or law, but I've read a few law books, like four or five here and there, most of them by Scalia. So again, there's my bias, but um, you can really see like the constrained versus unconstrained in action through. Something like Citizens United, that ruling. Um, the the constrained view says judges are that the constrained view judges laws by their effects, um, where the unconstrained view judges laws by their intentions. So it's more again, um, it, like what is the actual outcome of the law? Like who cares um, about the intention of the law? Who cares what it was trying to do? The purpose is like the thing is, does this do it? Does the law work in this way? Does it get this certain outcome? Um, and then the, the unconstrained view is more judges laws again, like what is the intent? Like we want this. Okay. Let's create a law that does this. Or like, it's not too concerned about the, the outcomes that we didn't think of, or, or like the unintended consequences, that kind of thing. It's more, what is the intent of this law? So if you come out and say, I oppose the green new deal, um, well, again, the constrained view tends to be against the green new deal because they're judging it by the effect, which is not very good. And, um, I don't even think that's my bias showing it's, Again, read the Green New Deal. It's not good. <laughs> Whereas the unconstrained view, again, judges laws by their intentions. The intent of the Green New Deal is to make the environment better, make the world a better place, save the environment. And if you're against that, you must be against saving the environment. That is the mindset here. And then getting on to the part where I referenced um, like Citizens United in that, something about Citizens United. Um, I have, I'm not an expert on law again, but from what I've heard, from what I've been told, that law was, or that was, that court case was determined correctly. That in the sense of, I think the big thing was on like corporations are people. And in the sense of like, what does the legal dictionary say? What does the actual, like from the textualist perspective, regardless of the outcome, regardless of whether you agree with that outcome or not, 
is it good law? Is, is the law or is the system working in the way it should? The constrained view will say yes. They will say who cares about the like? Well, they, uh, they might not necessarily not necessarily say that, but they'll say I personally in this context do not care about the outcome. I am fine with this ruling because it was done through the proper channels. It was through the judicial system. The law was determined correctly. There and if it's a bad outcome, then it's a bad outcome. That's unfortunate. I. Uh, you might even disagree with the outcome, but the process was what was important. That went through correctly. Whereas the unconstrained view looks, again, they're not so concerned about the process. They're more concerned about the results. Was the result bad? Yes. Therefore, the law was bad. The ruling was bad. It's all about the results in this sense. And yeah, I think I might let my own bias go through again because to me, one of those seems obviously bad and the other seems obviously good. Uh, the, like one of these views seems correct and the other seems bad vastly incorrect but maybe that's just my constrained thinking and the unconstrained view looks at that and sees an obvious correct solution there an obvious correct um viewpoint and it's the opposite of what i see maybe that's the case but going forward um the unconstrained view favors human action motivated by selfishness and sincerity while whereas the constrained view less concerned with motives behind human action as long as interactions between individuals are positive sum so one thing to look through is um price gouging actually so if I were to show you, which I've written articles on this, if I can remember, I'll throw it in the description, and I've done a video on this as well. If you want the video version, I'll try to remember to leave both. Price gouging, believe it or not, like the act of raising prices during a crisis, like a hurricane or something, is good for society. That is an overall good thing because it is, it is an automatic rationing system. And you can say, oh, those people are like selfish and greedy or whatever, but by raising their prices, what they're doing is raising the price to meet the demand and to, and to correct for the supply and what it does is it ration things out so that um essentially like if you're someone that needs something really bad you're going to buy one or two if it's a really high price but you're probably going to be able to at least afford one maybe you have to use a credit card whatever but you'll buy one or two you'll be more careful with what you buy but you're going to buy it because you need it whereas if you were to force like your regulation or something force the um force some kind of the, the the price to stay where it was before the crisis and essentially make price gouging illegal what you do is someone goes in they see they need something so they buy as much as they possibly can which leaves less for other people that's essentially although that's that's not really part of this that's essentially to give the argument for that now you might actually this thing might be an action this whole constraint versus unconstrained might be an action as you're processing what i just said now let's say like just assume for the like whether you disagree or not just assume that i am correct in my analysis of price gouging for this example again if you disagree let me know why on the video which i'll try to leave in the description but essentially if you're if you follow the constrained view what you will do is you'll look at that you'll listen to that and say oh like oh it makes it makes people better off it's something that might be a little sleazy but if it really does provide an effective rationing system that makes people better off i am for that then that is good okay i am fine with price gouging then Whereas the unconstrained view tends to see a bigger issue that with that. Well, the intent matters more. Those people were intending to be greedy, and it doesn't matter about necessarily about the rationing system. The point is they were greedy. They were they were just raising prices during a disaster, and that's not what you do. That's not something you do during a disaster. You don't raise your prices when people need something, and um, they they take more issue with that. Well, they tend to be more dismissive of the results because to them, again, the intent of greeniness um, is something that they take issue with more. And again, I, I am obviously on the constrained side in this view. But more, okay, on to the next thing, which is something that this one is more like a, a bigger issue today. Uh, where am I at? The, the unconstrained view sees racism, crime, etc. as a socially learned phenomena. Whereas the constrained view sees racism, crime, etc. as just part of man's flawed, selfish, and fixed nature. So the unconstrained view is more, again, like if you were... Um, and it's actually interesting because this is kind of flip-flopped in recent years. I think this book came out in like 2007, 2008. But I'm thinking of how people see um, when they see races and they've been, they're like, oh, you've been indoctrinated into white supremacy from birth. So they do take that view like, oh, you're indoctrinated into white supremacy. Like if you are, if you're, if you take any view that's like even remotely, like not far left, they will say, oh, that's just white supremacy talking. You've been indoctrinated. This is something that we can if we redo society that if we change society around we can indoctrinate people out of this or not necessarily indoctrinate but unindoctrinate re-educate whatever you want to call it out of the idea of white supremacy and of course when they say crime they say oh if you're if you're a criminal well like again that's society doing things 
the way it is. Um, like modifying things to where you were that or you essentially did that. And um, what I do find interesting is, in a sense, like they're not wrong. There, I will point out they're not wrong in a sense of society can make you more like more or less likely to become a criminal, or depending on like poverty and all that kind of stuff. Sure. Whereas the constrained view also sees racism and crime as like that's just reality. That's just something that human nature um, is. It's part of human nature, and you're never going to get rid of it. You can incentivize it and disincentivize it in certain ways, but overall, you're never going to get rid of that. And that's the view I side with more. Although in this sense, again, it's not necessarily one or the other. You can. It's part of a spectrum. This I can see both, but again, I lean towards the constrained view. Whereas racism is just like it's part of collectivism it's the idea that um human beings when they don't have that much information they try to fill in the gaps like it's better to estimate it's better to make predictions and again if you can collectivize an entire group of society as oh i understand these people because i've interacted with a few of them in the past that's you filling in the gaps and that is in a sense um if, if that's left unchecked that can lead to racism where you you have a few bad interactions with someone of a certain race or you look at some statistics and you're like oh well, statistics don't show things um in the way i am you know or statistics show things in a certain negative light and then you can just apply that the, to the entire group and say okay all people are like this or you tend to make the more collective judgments um the constrained view says that's something that's unfortunately part of human nature and we can correct for that and disincentivize that but you're never going to get rid of it it's something that's always kind of there um, and what I'm thinking of recently is this kind of it, it kind of flip flopped in a sense of how I'm seeing people like all men are rapists and that kind of all men are potential rapists and that's just who men are like the radical feminists take this view of just men are all like fr they're all potential rapists and there's no way you can get rid of that um, in a sense you could say that the the radical feminists in that sense that are like specifically totally anti men they can fall into more of the constrained view of more men are just irredeemably evil. And there's no fixing that. And women are women have been corru or not corrupted, uh, oppressed by them throughout our lives, and that kind of thing. That in that sense, you see a bit of a flip flop. So on to the next one: the constrained view, uh, unconstrained on the left. Just remember that from now on, as I zoom forward. And I don't know what just happened, but okay, <laughs> I can fix this. Um, if you're not aware, I am fixing the mon. I have my monitor up in this. Here we go. Ah, fixed. I'm using OBS. For those that don't know, and this is a fantastic thing, so use it. Uh, sees racism. Are we already going through that one? Seeks to explain the causes of war, poverty, and crime. So that's the unconstrained view, which, again, that's not entirely, I don't think that's entirely incorrect to say, okay, how can we explain, like, what caused this particular crime or, or, or poverty? What causes poverty? What causes war? That's not necessarily an incorrect view. As someone that's more on the constrained side, I don't see that as necessarily something that's wrong. Uh, sees war, poverty, and crime as having been the norm throughout human history due to man's flawed, selfish, and vexed nature, and instead seeks to explain the causes of peace, wealth, law, and order, and morality. Now, again, as I read that, I am obviously more on the constrained side. If you've ever seen, um, I forget who, who worded, um, I forget the guy's name, but um, there's a quote online that's saying, asking what causes poverty, that's the wrong question. What you want to ask is what causes prosperity, like what makes society better off? Like what is it, like prosperity is not the default. Um, poverty and disease and just dying young, is that's that's the norm. Wealth is the is the unusual part. That's the part that like it, it's not it's not common. It's very rare. How do we get it and how do we get more of it? Um, so that's something you can see like that in a sense is left and right. And I know I've been a kind of applying this as left right, but I will point out Thomas Sowell does not specifically say this is a left right dichotomy. He does not make that comparison at all, though I do think it does. It overlaps in some sense. Again, as we said, Marxism, which is like the leftist, uh, the leftist ideology, the, the far left extreme. Marxism is not specifically constrained or unconstrained. He does go into a section there on why it's different, why it's a little bit of either. And it's actually more towards, they apply the constraint in some view, unconstrained in another view, something like that. So again, on here. And obviously, I'm getting this from the Foundation for Economic Education. I'm getting this from an article. But this is, I believe, in his book, um, not, or yeah, The Vision of the Anointed. I believe this chart is in that book. Um, but I'm just taking it here for as a reference because I'm not just going to hold up the page and go through it. Um, so, sees um, war, poverty, and crime as having being the norm. So, if you look back through human history, I think pretty objectively, like, we can say the constrained view is the correct one, that, yeah, like, things are bad. Like, reality is essentially, things are bad, how do we make them less bad, or how do we make them good? Um, the, the bad is the norm, how do we make things good? 
And that takes an actual, like, it takes a few steps to do that. Um, if you do nothing, bad stuff happens. You have to work. You have to actively work to get um, to get success. Whereas the, again, the unconstrained view tends to say, like, oh, like, what is causing all these bad things to society? Rather than, like, see, they see society as normally, like, the neutral is the good. The default is the good. Why are bad things happening? Um, but I think that pretty much explains that there. On to the next one. The unconstrained view sees market economies as obeying the power of particular interests and should therefore be made in the future to obey the power of the public interest. This vision seeks to define the public interest by itself. And the constrained view sees market economies as responsive to systemic forces, the interaction of innumerable individual choices and performances. So this is where incentives are really important with the constrained view. They see like capitalism as the, the system of incentives. Like how do we incentivize people to do certain things? We know that greed is the default. We know that people are going to be greedy no matter what. So how can we make greed a positive sum gain for, gain for everyone? Like how can a greedy man that wants to sell you something and a greedy person that wants to buy something... They can make that transaction both in their own personal self-interest and they can benefit from it. And then that goes back to the where the unconstrained view kind of takes an issue with that because if they're both greedy, that's intent. Intent is bad. Like the they have a bad intent, so they t more, tend to take um, more of an issue with that. Whereas the constrained view is like, well, the intent doesn't necessarily matter. The net gain, both people benefited. That's good. Like if everyone's benefiting from something, that's good. But again, as you can see, where the constrained view is more like free market capitalism, whereas the unconstrained view is more like a socialism, pretty much. And again, like if you're part of the unconstrained view, that doesn't make you a socialist. It just puts you in the mindset that is the same as the socialist. And again, I'm not trying to do a guilt by association thing there. I'm just saying like that's where the view comes from. Someone with the unconstrained view is more inclined towards socialism, where someone with the constrained view like me... I don't like socialism. I'm more inclined towards capitalism and getting rid of just the which one works and one, which doesn't, which I think it's obvious one of them works, one of them doesn't. Just trying to put that on the back burner for now. Just trying to take a moment to rather than dismiss these views as wrong, which again, they are, but um, rather than, I'm, so I'm not trying to say it's not wrong. Take a moment to really put yourself in that person's shoes and see how they're viewing the world. And again, it, since socialism is wrong and a failed system, what I would do is say, okay, if that's their view, how do we, how do we, um, really work to change their mind or work to make them more um, understanding of the opposite view. Because as Thomas Sowell pointed out, he does find this interesting how there is a reason that these two views are so main, like are so um, it, like it's not one, one of them is not yielding ground. It's not like one of them, the wrong one has been defeated over time. No, these are two views that have stayed pretty strong over time. And that's because when you look at reality, you're, it's kind of like what Scott Scott Adams calls the two movies thing. Like that, you look at the exact same thing, but you take two different views from that. And part of that has to do with these people are looking at two completely different things. So when they're looking at um, a system or when they're looking at an event that has multiple different variables there, it's not necessarily that they disagree on one variable. It's that one sees one variable as important, whereas the other sees a different variable as important. So to to make sense there, it's not that they're disagreeing on one certain idea, they're disagreeing on which of those variables is important, if that makes sense. So again, like the, the results versus intentions. It's not that they disagree about the result, it's that one views the result as important, the other views the intent as important, if that makes sense. So the unconstrained view seeks economic and social equality, even if the means chosen imply great inequality in the right to decide such issues and choose such means. Whereas the constrained view seeks equality through free freedom of choice. So this essentially is, he, he does clarify in his book, um, the Vi or A Conflict of Visions, that this is not something that is specifically equality of outcome versus equality of opportunity. It's a bit different, but it's pretty similar, but there's a bit of a difference there that isn't, um, that's worth keeping in mind. Though for the sake of this, the simplicity here, I'm going to say, okay, constrained view through equality through freedom of choice that's the equality of opportunity part whereas the um the unconstrained view focuses more again they focus more on results they focus on intent and they focus on results and uh, the constrained view i did say they focus more on results more in terms of um again like is a certain policy good or bad but this is a different kind of thing this is a bit different here whereas the unconstrained view takes instead of just being anti-results they're more in the sense of they look at um I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of social in the social justice terms the easiest to explain the concept of um racism and <laughs> we'll go with that the racism of or of um proportionality and certain people represented in certain fields in that 
So if you've ever listened to Destiny, a debate between Destiny and a right winger, this could, like this is it. This is it right here. Um, this is the best example of why there's a difference there, why there's a a problem. Whereas if you, act, especially with Sargon and Destiny, because Sargon is the constrained view when he debates with Destiny, and Destiny is the unconstrained view when he debates with Sargon. Like those are too clear. You can see it right there in evidence. Whereas you'll see Sargon will often bring up things like, well, I don't want to give our affirmative action for a certain racial group i don't want to put another racial group or gender group um first in a certain in the process i don't want to make them a priority in the process because i see that as awful i see that as racism when you take one group in the process and promote them as is um as does affirmative action whereas the unconstrained view again they're focused more on like what is the outcome of this thing what is the results of this thing when they say they seek um equality they're talking about well if a if a program if a system results in 70 percent men in one field and 30 percent women in that field that's what they're concerned about they say that is racism because there is a difference there that, that is bad differences are bad we want equality so what they do is they say okay i don't care too much about the system like i don't care too much about the process that things go through i care more about the results so they're gladly willing to mess with the system and put one race or one gender above the other in the system if it determines the same results because again the results is what are what they care about so when they see 70 percent men 30 percent women in stem fields or i'm just making up those numbers i have no idea what the actual numbers are but i'm saying for the sake of examples 70 percent men 30 percent women that is sexism because they're unequal whereas if you treat everyone equally in the process you're going to get those those results in that way but again, it's not that necessarily that um, one is more okay with racism than the other. It's more, although, again, it depends on your definition of racism. But my point here is that they have two different definitions of racism. Not just talking about the uh, the prejudice plus power thing. I'm talking the, the unconstrained view. When they see racism, they see 70% men, 30% women. That is racism, or sexism, sorry. They see sexism. Or it's the same thing. Again, racism, sexism, I'm talking about if you see 70 what is this higher black incarceration rate lower um white incarceration rate rate that's racism there because they're looking at the results and they see a problem there whereas the constrained view is less about the results they're more about what is the process like point to me the point a part of the process here in this system where in the system does it become racist like where in the system is it, does it become sexist and I think it is clear, like, I'm trying to be as non-biased as possible. I think it's clear one of these systems, or one of these views, the constraint versus unconstrained, is deeply flawed. Not in every respect. Again, like, I, we shouldn't just, um, I, again, I'm not just tossing out the unconstrained view. I think there's something to think about there. There's something to acknowledge. I, I want to acknowledge it, and I want to discuss with these people. And to do that, you need to understand their view of things. And hopefully that, hopefully that makes sense. But if not, one more time, again, if they... One side is concerned, the unconstrained side is concerned more with equality of outcome. And they're willing to have a prejudiced system. Or they're willing to put one race or one gender above the other if it results in the correct outcome. Because then that's not racism if you're even evening out the outcome. Whereas the constrained view, they, like, they take an issue with racism like affirmative action. Putting one race or gender above the other in terms of the process to get a certain outcome they don't care about the outcome they are the outcome isn't so much as important as the system is the system fair okay we're done that's it whereas the unconstrained view are the outcomes equal okay we're done we're good let's keep it there and again just to clarify with i did say earlier the um the constrained is more concerned with results whereas now i'm saying the unconstrained is more concerned with the results it's a different scenario whereas um in in this sense again it's the like we're talking about racism or sexism like what's the pair are we getting parity there are we getting we're getting equality whereas in the um in the earlier example it's more of like okay does this policy proposal support um the like economic or economic environmental support does it um is it, does the green new deal help the environment yes okay i don't care about how it does it or like i don't care about that i just care about does it help the environment in that sense yes um, that that's what they they care about they they care about the intent and they're not really looking to exactly the process or the results in that sense whereas the constrained view is more no we care about does this policy actually do good or bad and on to the last one here the unconstrained view points to human irrationality as proof that the strongest most capable among us must lead 
whereas the constraint is less concerned with whether or not individuals always behave rationally, emphasizes that leaders come from the same pool of flawed, selfish, and fixed human beings. So essentially, again, the, the constrained view, you hear this more, the free market of ideas, like you want to put the best ideas out there and the smartest people, they will rise to the top of this system where everyone starts out pretty much equal. Again, some people know people, they have connections in that, and it's obviously not perfect, but they understand that everyone is kind of flawed, everyone is imperfect. So what we need is a nice like free market of ideas, and hopefully those good ideas will rise up to the top. Whereas the unconstrained view is more like, yeah, human um, human irrationality is like humans aren't rational. What we need is the best of us, the best, the most rational of us to stand up and lead people. We need to lead people. We need to be in charge. Like we need the right people in charge. And um, as you can see, that kind of leads to an abuse of power. But again, abuse of power does not matter in this sense because to them, the unconstrained view is more, okay, like are people abusing power? Okay, the wrong people are in charge. So we need the right people in charge. And this actually kind of leads to the hashtag like not real socialism kind of thing because it's not real socialism if the wrong people are in charge. That's what it's all about. Socialism is about getting the right people in charge to rule things, to, to control things because they are the most rational. They are the perfect. They are not necessarily the perfect, but they are the best of society and that they are the ones that need to manage things. And if those people aren't in charge, well, then it's not socialism, is it? Because the right people weren't in charge. Whereas again, the, the constrained view, looks at that and says, well, it doesn't matter if the right people were in charge or not. The problem was the incentive structure that led to a crash like this. It's, it's incentives are important here. They are about, okay, humanity is as it is. We need to have a society around it that creates an incentive structure that, cre uh, that has good people rise to the top and bad people not rise to the top, not get in charge. Whereas again, the unconstrained view is more, okay, forget the incentives thing. We don't care about incentives. Are the right people in charge? Are the right people real socialists? And that's all you really need. So um, I think I let my bias run through, especially on that last one here. But um, I, hopefully it made sense that I'm not necessarily dis, I'm not trying to dismiss one. I'm saying their views are worth considering. At the same time, I'm not justifying their views. I'm not saying they're right. I made it pretty clear which side I lie on here. Uh, but for more information, there's the the vision of the anointed. I believe this chart is from. I haven't read that book, so I can't say for sure. But I did read a conflict of visions, which kind of lays all this thing out in a much more non-biased way than I just did throughout this video. I highly recommend it. It's very good. Um, it kept me, to be perfectly honest, I actually read. Um, what did I read? I read something different, like a good old fiction book with a good story in that. After I read the conflict of visions, and I found the conflict of visions more interesting, and the other one was a bit more boring. So. <laughs> Um, but that might just be my own, my own, um, weirdness bleeding through there. But yeah, I think this is important stuff. Like this is stuff we, we need to know when talking to the other side. And again, this isn't necessarily just a left and right thing. There are loads of exceptions. And the two main exceptions he covers in his book, A Conflict of Visions, is the, um, the, the Marxists and the utilitarians. They are two like exceptions to this role here. And even goes through like fascism, okay, is a bit hard to point, a bit, a, bit, a bit hard to pinpoint. Libertarians, a bit hard to pinpoint. And what I find is libertarians tend to trend, they, they kind of do, um, it's not, it's not that they're neither le left nor right, it's that you get a lot of people from the left and the right coming to libertarianism and different ideas like that for different reasons. And in the same sense, the constrained versus unconstrained, I think you have constrained people going to libertarianism for the free market capitalism, the, the incentive structures, because libertarians love it, talking about incentives. And then you go to the, um, the unconstrained view also comes to libertarianism to see, um, because they're more concerned about the, yeah, like freedom. <laughs> like they're just like, yeah, freedom. We need, um, we need essentially like legalize all the stuff, freedom in that. So there is a bit of a different, um, and a, a different viewpoint in here that, that leads like both views to towards the si uh, similar ideology. But I'm th that's a bit of a tangent. But let me know what you think in the comment section. I really do want to know what you think. If you think I got this all wrong, let me know. Um, I recommend again th all three of his books, even though I haven't read The Vision of the Anointed, but it's got this chart in it, and that's what I relied on, so it must be pretty good. Um, a Conflict of Visions, good non biased view. And then The Quest for Cosmic Justice is just more of a, he just takes the hammer. Or, takes the chisel and then just goes right at the the more unconstrained view of things of why are they wrong this is they're wrong and why um but it, it, it's it's they're, they're all worth reading i will say that i can say even though i haven't read vision of the anointed it's probably worth reading but yeah again let me know what you think in the comment section like the video if you enjoyed subscribe for more and thanks for watching